Hello and welcome to Exploited Crimes and Technology. My name is Opal Singleton and we come to you every Saturday afternoon at 3 o'clock right here on AM 590, The Answer. Well, interesting weeks as they go by, you know, we all survived Thanksgiving. I don't know about you, but I'm incredibly thankful this year. It seems like on the one hand, things are like tougher than ever tougher than ever. It's just crazy out there, you know, with the, the COVID thing, and especially for a nonprofit. Most of you know that this show is brought to you by Million Kids. It is called Million Kids because more than one million kids are trafficked each year throughout the world. And uh, we are we serve as the training and outreach coordinator for the Riverside County Anti-Human Trafficking Task Force. That is a task force that's ran by the sheriff department, amazing men and women, about 13 of them working full time to do nothing but go out and, and the worst of the worst. And uh, I think they're the best of the best, but when it comes to child sex trafficking, it doesn't get any worse than that. And I'm proud as I can be to support them and uh, serve as their training and outreach coordinator. Well, it's been challenging as a nonprofit, as my guest is probably about to tell you also. This is a hard, hard time for nonprofit organizations because I haven't made a public speech since March 12th. It was a big one when we did it. I remember it. I keep it in my heart just in case we ever get to do it again. But every day it looks a little more challenging out there. So in the meantime, we keep beating the drum and doing the work and putting one foot in front of the other. And I'm so grateful for each and every one of you that support our work and that follow us. Um, Many of you may have heard that uh, we were taken down off of Facebook this last week. We have no idea why, no idea why whatsoever. I mean, we're a nonprofit. The only politics we ever got into at all was I really wanted to see Proposition 20 pass so you could make child sex trafficking a violent crime. And unfortunately, not enough people agreed with me. But other than that, we, uh, you know, we we walk the walk and we do the work and we help kids. But they uh, basically have informed us that they have no customer service because we're not customers. We didn't pay and they uh, can decide whatever they want to do to take us off the air. And they have done that for me personally and our corporation. So if you're one of our thousands of me and kids followers on Facebook, I hope you will go to me and and sign up for our newsletter so we can keep in touch with you. We are coming back on again and uh, try to walk a very fine line because we have no idea why we were part of the millions that they have just arbitrarily decided to take off. So that makes it challenging for us. We still have our other accounts and we still have meandkids.org and I hope that you will go to it and support us and, and finance our work and help us. We will get back out there And uh, we will keep you informed so that you can do it. But if you can help us, we want to become more autonomous on our own site so that we can do, you know, we've trained 400,000 people now and uh, uh, we want to keep that up. And and we're going to find a way to raise the funding to do that on our own site. So that's enough about me and kids. We have a very special guest today and I'm very excited about her. I had not heard as much as I should have about an organization that has accomplished as much as they have. And uh, Dina Murray, my friend and uh, supporter here at Me and Kids, uh, said, you've got to meet this lady. Her name is Sydney, and she's teaching me to say her last name, <laughs> Tempesta. <laughs> and she is with Children's Riot. So welcome, Sydney. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I am just honored to be here with you today. Well, tell us all about who you are, what your background is, and how you got into this. Um, Well, first and foremost, I am a wife. I'm a mother. And I think that heart specifically, being a mother, led me to the path of children's riot. Um, Professionally, I am a photographer. I photograph a lot of celebrity portraiture. Wow. And um, I have my own separate following for London Light, focusing in on specifically my photography. You know, like anybody, um, sometimes when you can't sleep at night, you you reach for your phone. And that's exactly what I did one night. 
I was laying in bed next to my husband and I just couldn't fall asleep. And so I just started scrolling Instagram. And it was at that point that I discovered a child exploitation account through Instagram. Wow. My life was forever changed after encountering that account. Mm -hmm. I stayed up all night reporting this specific account, all the photos, the videos. I then went and I screen recorded all the followers and down the rabbit hole I went. I was absolutely shocked. This account had over 5,000 followers and just a rabbit hole of child exploitation. And Mm -hmm. I was shocked at what I was witnessing. But what was even more shocking was after reporting these accounts, pretty promptly I received the reply from Instagram, this does not go against our community standards. You got to be kidding. A million kids to us um, <laughs> having I, just been taken off the air and oh. knowing, knowing what a tremendous work we do. That's really a, that's really a pain. Yeah. But before we go any farther here, let me ask you a couple of questions. Mm-hmm. One is when you saw the child exploitation, was this a young child acting as an adult sexually or was an adult violating that child? Basically the account Because it's interesting, these predators, they know how to set up their account to avoid being detected by Facebook's AI. So on the feed, it had, um, it was basically focusing in on little boys Mm -hmm. and it had tons of photos of little boys. I would say all under the age of 12, Mm -hmm. ranging from maybe age six to 12. Mm -hmm. And through the stories, they would have videos of little boys. Um, in a sexual manner. And Instagram said that didn't violate. Correct. And I was outraged. I was, I I didn't sleep all night. I watched the sunrise that night. I was so upset. I mean, even thinking about it now, I get very emotional. Yes. That kind of thing never leaves your psyche. It never leaves you. And as a mother, I'm just thinking to myself, these could be somebody, you know, these are somebody's children. Yes. Um, and it just, it just angered me. And, you know, it's very interesting. Fast forward about two weeks after first encountering this account, we were contacted because I had started sharing about it through my own personal business page because I was so outraged. Um, we were contacted by a mother whose son was featured on the account. The predator wow. had gone to her account and stolen a photo off of her own personal um, Instagram account of her son at the beach. Mm. And I just, I had no idea what I was getting involved in at that point. All I knew Mm -hmm. is that I was this, this bundle full of emotions. And I was so angered that this was allowed to happen. And I was shocked because of the network of how many child predators there are connected through social media. Yes. I, you know, one of the things I, that I try to do, I, our organization is uh, all about prevention and intervention, very similar to yours. And um, I myself am a post-certified trainer. I train, I'm train. i known for training law enforcement and code enforcement and fire departments and people like that. And, uh, and I have tens of thousands of hours of research on this. And I think the average public has no understanding how big this is. They, they found a child pornography ring recently out of South Korea that had over a million subscribers. And the, the thing I share with my audiences is that just because it's South Korea doesn't mean the pedophiles are not from Fontana or Rancho or San Bernardino or Riverside or any of the places. These are global rings. And that was a million people who paid a subscription to get those photos. Oh, yes. And it's, it really, you nailed it when you said the general public has no idea how big this problem is. Mm -hmm. And it's, but what's crazy about it is that you can literally, as just a mom, a teacher, whoever, you can access this through social media with Mm -hmm. very little effort. Thanks. Thanks to hashtags. Mm -hmm. This is it. It, it's basically Instagram. They, they oh, yeah. favor, you know, cam girls, cam girls gone wild, all the hashtags. They know exactly what to look for. Right. Yeah. 
It's uh, interesting. Okay. Well, our guest today is uh, Sydney Takesta. She's getting me trained here. Her <laughs> organization is Children's Riot. I'm going to ask her some more questions here shortly in the next segment, but I believe she's from the Temecula Murrieta area. And uh, she runs a nonprofit similar to Million Kids and is doing a fantastic job. So we are coming up against that break. I'm going to ask you to stay with us and we're going to be right back. Don't go away. Real estate sales in the Inland Empire are really hot. Sellers and buyers recognize that these low interest rates will not last. Sean and Colleen at Caldwell Banker Armstrong Properties in Riverside are proud to sponsor this show. They are the best in the Inland Empire. They're fair, honest, creative, and they care about you and your situation. If you're in the market to buy or sell a home, call Sean and Colleen at 951-529-4066. Hello, this is Opal Singleton of Exploited Crimes and Technology. Hey, there are many good restaurants in the Inland Empire, but really great restaurants are hard to find. Let me tell you about the Toasted Barrel in Corona. It's a trendy, upscale steakhouse with great pasta and seafood. It's a fantastic choice for birthdays and anniversaries or just that special night out with your loved one and friends. Inland Empire Magazine has awarded them best restaurant and brunch for the past three years. The owners, Ed and Shirley, are friendly and attentive to your needs. If you're a prime rib connoisseur, this place is for you. Go ahead and try it out. The Toasted Barrel, located at 1300 El Sobrante Road in Corona. Or Google them at Toasted Barrel to make reservations. I guarantee you, you're going to love it. Be sure and tell Ed and Shirley that Opal sent you. It will be a night you'll never forget. Societal Shift, A World Without Borders and a Home Without Walls. This is the most important book you will read this year, especially if you have children or grandchildren. We are living at the most important time in all of history. In 2020, the entire world will be connected by internet, more than six billion people coming together. Technology will provide many great advantages for our kids, but a world without borders for our kids is also a world without borders for pimps, predators, pedophiles, cartels, and organized crime. It is a home without walls because 87% of the kids sleep with their phone. It is the greatest societal experiment of all time. Our kids are technology geniuses and their parents are technophobic. Some are techno impotent. New apps come with no warnings on how a predator will use them against our kids. Advancing technologies like encrypted messaging, vaporware, artificial intelligence, cryptocurrency, and the dark net will challenge law enforcement, teachers, and parents to keep kids safe. Recent research states that 9,000 kids a day are being blackmailed with a naked photo and 58% will meet their predator. It is indeed a societal shift and one in which most parents are unprepared. If you are a parent or grandparent, teacher, counselor, or social worker, please take time to read Societal Shift. Only $18.99 plus $6 shipping. Order today at millionkids.org. That's millionkids, M-I-L-L-I-O-N-K-I-D-S dot org. It'll be the greatest gift you can give your family and yourself. Order Societal Shift today. Million Kids takes checks and credit cards. Opal Singleton, the author, will personally sign the book and send it to you. Again, go to millionkids.org and order Societal Shift today. Join Million Kids. Keep our kids safe from predators. AM 590, the answer. Hello and welcome back to Exploited Crimes and Technology. This is Opal Singleton and our guest today is Sydney Takesta. Her organization is Children's Riot and she is a nonprofit organization that is combating child sexual exploitation specifically uh, and really targeted on how the internet is used uh, in that realm. And I think we'll find out later that she also does a lot to change the law on it. But before we get to that part, Sydney, pick up with your story here. You, you discovered this uh, Instagram and you decided that you weren't going to just put it down. You were going to do something about it. And I love it. So keep going. Yeah. So, you know, I spent, I was up all night after encountering my first uh, child exploitation account. And my husband, I was just waiting for my husband basically to wake up to let him know what I had found. My husband is a software engineer. Mm. And so he's, he's very well versed in technology. And I just, I just basically shared my heart. I was like, I cannot believe this is happening. And his reply to me was, this has been happening forever. Yes. And there's, you know, really nothing that could be done about it. 
And for me, that was just fuel to my fire. <laughs> I know, no, sir. <laughs> and that's when I decided to use my own personal platform that I had uh, developed through London Light Photography. I knew by sharing this story that I would potentially be sacrificing my own business. Um, I knew what would be around the corner if I decided to share in this. But at that point, it didn't matter. It didn't matter because after seeing the faces of those children, nothing was going to stop me. Nothing stopped me at this point. And so I started talking about it through my stories, through London Light. Within a week's time, we had 500 people reporting these child exploitation accounts. They were at that point, all mothers. And we were all heartbroken and shocked together. Within the first week, we brought down accounts that totaled over 140,000 followers. Wow. And that's nothing. That's nothing compared to what's out there. Mm -hmm. I just continued doing everything I could do to shine light on this issue. I started reaching out to senators, members of Congress, anybody that would listen. I, at that point, I decided to hold a demonstration in July. We had about a thousand people who attended. And since that point, I've just been moving. And at this point, my goal is to hold tech accountable for what is happening on their platform. Mm -hmm. I'm a supporter of the Earn It Act. I believe that tech should be held accountable. Mm -hmm. Currently, Section 230 allows them blanket immunity. And what has happened because of that are over 65 million accounts reported through Facebook of child exploitation, which I believe to be a very modest number. Let me uh, take you back here because I know you live in this world, but our audience doesn't. What is the Ardent Act? Is that what you stated? The Earn It Act. So Earn It Act aims to hold tech. Oh, Earn It. Earn It Act. Okay. And that's basically, that's huge. That's on the horizon. Um, uh -huh. Earn It Act aims to hold tech accountable for the data that is loaded onto their servers. Right. As of right now, uh, tech is not held accountable. And I believe that's why they have AI that oversees all of these reports by their users. But there was an organization called the Tech, I believe it's a Tech Transparency Project, TPP, that analyzed uh, the reporting of social media. Like if a user were to go on and report, and they found that only 9% of 366 cases that were investigated um, were brought down. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering, I can't help but wonder if this is why Million Kids has been um, uh, eliminated because we probably got caught up in the algorithm because we talk about child pornography and preventing it. I'm an, an absolute, um, I have been since 2012, uh, uh, just an absolute, uh, warrior against child pornography because I understand it technically understand what's happening. I track it. I've, I've built, um, all kinds of research around it. And, uh, so we do everything that we can to, to stop child pornography. And so rather than getting rid of the child pornography, that looks like they've gotten rid of the organization that combats it. You know? No, so. Opal, if I'm being, if I'm being fully honest, you know, if the earn it act were to pass, it would significantly shift these social media companies and their ability to make money. And it would just shift the whole game. And I know that personally through children's right, we were shadow banned. Um, and I just think it's so much bigger than you being caught up in the algorithm. I believe these tech companies do not want light shined on this very big issue because it would directly affect their profits. If I'm being honest, through my research, uh -huh. that's what I have found. Right. There's full negligence through social media, full negligence. Well, there's and also a, a movement in California, it seems like, and maybe I'm maybe I'm being overly sensitive, but there seems to be a movement to legalize or normalize pedophilia. Well, SB 145, um, I don't know if you're referring yes. to that specifically. 
I know that that law is very difficult on child uh, sex trafficking because Mm -hmm. so many of our SB 145 has to do with the age of consent down to 14 and making someone a, um, you know, a registered sex offender. But you think of most of our sex trafficking cases, they're 15, they've got a black eye, they've been beat up. The pimp is 23. She's going, oh, no, he's my boyfriend and I fell and hurt myself. And so that that law is going to be very difficult for us. Right. And you know what's what's interesting? I'm currently working to make uh, child trafficking a serious and violent felony in the state of California because it currently currently (laughs) is just a felony. And so because it's not a serious and violent felony, it avoids the three strike law which mm-hmm. allows these predators to get out on early release. Typically they serve about 50% of their sentencing. Right. So I'm, I'm working over here as I know you are too, but yeah, if you that's really good. want to, to, to go after this, it has to be through the law. Um, I, I agree with you a whole lot. I, I think uh, back to the earlier discussion, one of the reasons that I would post these articles on my Facebook page about, you know, when they found and arrested a child pornographer, uh, you know, I would do that so that the public would be aware of how prolific this is. Um, our Inland Empire area has, um, uh, you know, on the opposite side of this conversation, uh, if you will, they have some really good law enforcement that cares deeply about combating child pornography. Uh, Chief Green out of Fontana, just amazing man that has a background in uh, crimes against children. And of course, Homeland Security with Internet Crimes Against Children, ICAC. And I've worked very, very closely with them uh, because of my role with um, uh you know, as the training and outreach coordinator for the task force. But, you know, I appreciate having local people who care, but this, this, uh, phenomena is so large. Uh, Mm -hmm. you know, one, one group had, uh, 215,000 pedophiles, one had 500,000. They found a database, three of them in Europe that had over 30 million images each. And these are not images. These are children who have been violated and had their photo taken. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, you know, I think if we don't fix what is broken now, this particular chapter in history is going to be looked at one of the most horrific chapters for children. We, Mm -hmm. I believe, never in history have we ever had this many exploited children, and then their exploitation shared with millions. See, I believe that a lot of that is connecting that due to technology. And I I have a book out called Societal Shift. Actually, we have a movie coming out in the first quarter of next year on this very subject. The the global technology, the fact that the entire world is being connected by internet, brings these pedophiles together, normalizes it, it gives them a camaraderie, gives them a chance to share the photos, and more important, to use virtual private network and bulletproof hosting to hide those photos. And I think those are all factors in allowing this thing to grow. Well, one thing that I noticed too, because I've been able to study the culture just through social media, they feel so comfortable. It's disgusting how comfortable they feel to... To, to speak their opinions on social media, to talk right. about these children like they're a piece of meat in a mm-hmm. highly inappropriate way. Mm-hmm. There is no fear because they know there is nothing to fear on social media platforms because nothing is truly being enforced. Yeah. Well, we have as our guest today, uh, Sydney, and she is with Children's Riot. And uh, we are going to be giving out her website and how to contact her as we go. But uh, I greatly appreciate having you on as my guest. And so stay with us, folks. We're going to be right back. Hello, this is Opal Singleton of Exploited Crimes and Technology. I want to tell you about a book I wrote called Seduced, The Grooming of America's Teenagers. It's all about how predators access, groom, recruit, and exploit our young people using social media, online gaming, video chat rooms. Technology is changing at the speed of light, and we have to understand how to keep our kids safe from predators. So you can get this book by going to 
meandkids.org. It's $16. I'll sign it and I'll ship it to you personally. We hope that you will order this book, Educate Yourself About How to Keep Our Kids Safe in This Day of Changing Technology. Join us each Saturday for our radio show at Exploited Crimes and Technology at 3 o'clock on AM 590, The Answer. Hello and welcome back to Exploited Crimes and Technology. This is Opal Singleton and I'm the president and CEO of Million Kids. And I'm also serve as the training and outreach coordinator for the Riverside County Anti-Human Trafficking Task Force. I do want to let the folks here at the Inland Empire, if you're listening to us for the first time, this organization is brought, or this uh, show is brought to you by an organization called Million Kids. But there are many good organizations in our uh, community in the Inland Empire. And uh, I'm very proud to work with uh, the Riverside County Sheriff Department and their commitment that district attorney and his commitment to to keeping our kids safe from predators and doing what they have to do. And even in these very difficult times, we have more kids online right now than we have ever had before. And I have more cases of exploitation that to deal with, to, to guide parents, to get kids help than we've ever had before. But your river, your San Bernardino County task force is an excellent task force. Also then that's uh, Sergeant O'Brien over there and uh, my hero, chief green. We're going to have him on. I keep promising that. I haven't got to it yet. We're going to have him on soon. Uh, Chief Green from Fontana. You folks are really, really fortunate to have people who care and who care about kids. Our guest today is Sydney and uh, Sydney Takesta. Her organization is Children's Riot. Sydney, uh, one of the things that you, you did from what I'm reading here is once you recognize the problem, you said you set about starting to see what you could do to change the laws. Is that correct? Yes, uh, we right now on our website, you have the ability to sign a letter and we are planning at the beginning of the year to send these letters to all members of Congress. And at this point, we have thousands of letters that are signed. This letter specifically focuses in on um, discussing the negligence of social media. It's very important that all citizens of the world contact their parliament, their members of Congress, to let them know what a big issue this is. Mm -hmm. People need to, I mean, this needs to be a focal point for all people, for all decent people in this world, because I truly believe if we do not stand now, laws will be put into place that will enable this even more so. I I believe that it's not negligence, although I do believe there is negligence, but I believe that because of artificial intelligence and machine learning, that this is a targeted effort. And, uh, and I've, you know, I recently saw the movie Social Dilemma. If you haven't seen that movie, you really ought to. I've, I've had so many people, you know, I have all these people that come to me and say, see this, see that. And I'm like, yeah, okay. I lay 24 hours in a day, you know, take time to see Social Dilemma if you have not seen that. Because I don't believe that this is only negligence on this part. I mean, they have they have an agenda, they have a strategy, and it's based on artificial intelligence and machine learning. And uh, it seems to protect these kinds of people and uh, really kind of push back on people who are trying to do something about it. Well, let me share in a little information with you. So currently, as it sits, Facebook has fifteen thousand moderators. That, that helps them oversee reported accounts globally. However, there are 1.73 billion daily active users. Right. How can 15,000 content moderators oversee 1.73 billion daily users? And when I say negligence, that's what I mean, because their AI is unable, after I have so much experience with reporting these exploitation accounts, we'll report a child exploitation account 50 plus times and it won't be brought down because their AI doesn't recognize it as such. And they need more content moderators, human beings, because their AI is incapable of picking up on language. And 
I think starting there, I think is a step towards a safer or a, a safer you know, platform for children to be on. And if they're not willing to do that, then children should not be allowed on their platform. You shouldn't be under 18 and allowed on social media if these social media giants aren't willing to take the proper steps to protect children. You know, one of the things that I see about that is not only do they not have enough people to do it, but they're very capable through AI of recognizing certain patterns of behavior and deciding to filter it down and give it some focus. And what I find with them is that they have a particular mindset and they now have, I mean, you're seeing massive censorship go on at this point with uh, organizations like Instagram and Facebook. And uh, so they obviously have the capability of doing this. But what you don't see is what, what I see is a whitewashing of the issue of, oh, yeah, we're doing the best I can, but we're very big. The, the other thing that uh, I really have come to understand is that the and what you're doing and I'm doing is so important. And what we're doing right here is important for parents to understand social media app companies are not looking out for your child. Uh, if they say you have to be 12, do not put your child on there when they're seven or when they're nine. Uh, read the stuff because you're the parent. And I believe that that makes you responsible to understand and also follow the rules. So the responsibility goes all around. So many kids now are posting very erotic photos, uh, as we saw in the movie cuties, you know, and, uh, and just normalizing that behavior and everybody kind of seems to look the other way without understanding that that is fodder for pedophilia. Yes, you're fully right. You know, it's really going to take accountability on all ends. It's going to take accountability from parents, from tech and from our policymakers to protect children. I think you and I, Opal, we both know that children are not priority right now. Mm -hmm. Because if children were priority, there wouldn't be 65 million uh, reports of child exploitation, specifically through the Facebook platform. And again, I believe that's a modest number. Right. Uh, from our experience, I mean, they've I agree. done anything. So there needs to be a mass accountability. And that the thing that's going to get crazier to me now, first of all, you and I understand the breadth of the, of the child pornography problem. When you find one site that has a million paid subscribers, now you know that every one of those has at least one child they violated. And many pedophiles have multiple children, especially when they get into sextortion and sending naked photos and like that. So you're talking about a massive issue out here. And yet, as you began to look at it, look how, because of COVID, we're now putting five and six and seven year old kids for online learning. They are not going to go back to their bicycles. And, you know, who is watching those? I mean, that's, that's what I'm seeing is those are just, uh, you know, literally putting your child in the forefront to be exploited. Yeah, definitely. I, I believe I want to say there was an uptick of a hundred. I'm trying to remember the exact percentage, but I know that it was over a hundred percent since COVID. There's been an increase of child exploitation. Yes. Actually, the number recently was 137 percent. I can't remember who the quote is, but I've got it here somewhere in my research. But yeah, it's just going up and up and up. And I, you know, I understand the COVID, but I also understand that. You know, when you start putting a seven-year-old on there, they want to please and they want people to like them and they don't want to get the man in trouble. And they are absolute sitting ducks to be lured into this kind of thing. Yeah. It's, it's really sad. So I want to take it back to your technology. We're coming up against the break here, but, uh, so what kind of response are you getting from, from, uh, legislators, people, excuse me, not technology or your legislative people? I don't, I don't think that they, in my opinion, uh, I've, I'm currently working with a Senator. I actually have an upcoming meeting where we will be discussing, uh, how to keep children safe in the state of California. Um, but from what I've been watching with members of Congress, as they talk about the earn it act, I'm seeing that they're continually trying to water down the bill. 
which mm-hmm. I find to be very disappointing because yes. you feel like it's going to directly affect end to end encryption. Mm-hmm. Um, and this is where people, all people yeah. listening to this, this is your responsibility to, to make sure that you let your members of Congress know, like, this is priority. Yeah, we only have, we'll have about 45 seconds, but what are they doing with end to end encryption? Uh, so Facebook basically wants to introduce end-to-end encryption throughout their whole platform and uh, reported by missing and exploited children that that would basically cut the reports that they have in half. Yes. They're very fearful for that happening. Yes, building a brick wall to access to find the, the victim and be able to do something It's uh, once you get. And, and that's the whole idea of why so many of them have gone into bulletproof hosting where it's a uh, ironclad kind of thing. They, they're leaving the dark web to do that. So our uh, guest today is Sydney, and she's with Children's Riot, and we are up against a break, so stay with us. We're going to be right back. This message is all about Million Kids, the organization that helps locate missing kids throughout Southern California and educates to keep kids safe from predators. Million Kids educates school administrators, teachers, parents, and teenagers how predators identify a potential victim and the methods they use to recruit innocent kids. BMW of Riverside is a proud supporter of Million Kids. Visit BMW of Riverside at the Adams Street exit off the 91 freeway or click bmwofriverside.com. Hello, this is Opal Singleton of Exploited Crimes and Technology. Let me tell you about my friend Doris Anderson at Remax Realty in Upland. She is amazing. She's kind, she's patient, but she listens. And she's informed and she will help you with your real estate transaction in a way that works for you. Doris, in full disclosure, often supports the work of Million Kids because she cares about young people but she knows how to analyze a market, how to market a property, and how to find just the right transaction for both buyers and sellers. If you're looking to buy or sell real estate or invest in income property, contact Doris Anderson at Remax Realty 951-733-8899. That's 951-733-8899. 951-733-8899. Custom Service Systems, a proud supporter of Million Kids, is a family-owned and operated commercial cleaning company servicing the Inland Empire and surrounding areas since 1974. CSS takes pride in their ability to maintain the business facilities they serve and their long-lasting relationships with their valued clients. CSS provides a variety of cleaning systems customized to client needs, including deep cleaning and disinfectant to be COVID-19 compliant. From basic office cleaning to windows and floors, CSS will clean up your mess so you don't have to stress. Custom Service Systems cares about families and communities and wants to give back. Custom Service Systems are proud supporters of Million Kids to keep kids safe from predators. If you need the best cleaning services for your business or corporation, contact Custom Service Systems at cssclean.com. Again, cssclean.com or call 951-781-9345. That's 951-781-9345. You will know you found the best. Custom Service Systems. AM 590, the answer. Hello and welcome back to Exploited Crimes and Technology. This is Opal Singleton with Million Kids. I just want to take a minute and thank each and every one of you that have stuck by us. This year has been the year from heck, okay? <laughs> Try to keep it Christian here. It's been the toughest year of my entire life you know, nonprofit life. It's been 12 years and I've never seen anything like that. So I want to take this time, especially after coming out of Thanksgiving to say thank you to each and every one of you that cut checks and send them into us at millionkids.org. If you're thinking of it, we really, really appreciate you. We cannot do this work without you. And I'll tell you, I get these checks. I see each and every one of them. I pray over them. I thank God for you. And I send you a thank you myself. So thank you for each and every one of you that go to me and kids.org. Well, we have as our guest today, uh, Sydney, and she is with Children's Riot, and she runs an excellent organization also, and an organization that I would encourage you to support and support financially and get involved. With that, uh, Sydney and I were talking, we we're coming down to the end of the interview, but she wants to cover something having to do with the uh, European privacy and what's going on over there. Believe me, it will affect us here 
and it'll also you'll start to see a movement to start to look like that, unfortunately. Sydney, you want to tell us about it? Definitely. Um, so on December 21st, a law in the European Union called the e-privacy directive will stop the use of technology that helps identify child sexual exploitation online. And you know, these tools are critical yes. uh, to protect children. Mm-hmm. And like you said, this is a a worldwide network of yes. predators. What mm-hmm. happens over there is going to directly affect us over here. So yes. I encourage all to contact parliament. I have personally contacted multiple members in parliament, and I have even posted through our Children's Riot Instagram account uh, tags for you to personally reach out to these members of parliament to let them know how concerned you are and to let them know that you don't want this on your conscience. Yes. Because you're either going to stand and protect children that day or you are not. Yeah, you know, uh, one of the reasons that's so important, let me explain to our listeners here. These are large scale rings. These pedophiles, you know, they find each other online and they find um, an inclusion. Uh, you know, they feel like they're part of something important together. They get competitive. And as we said, you know, even though the ring may be discovered in South Korea or Finland or Romania, what they do, with the, what uh, Homeland Security and FBI and Interpol does is run the IP addresses of all the members they can locate in those subscription units. And that is how they suddenly find out and arrest the guy down the street from you. And, uh, you know, he's not showing up on any kind of sex offense role, but he's part of one of those big rings. And that's why this is so important. You say, what does Europe have to do with me? You know, these people are part of global rings and they, that is the reason why you see them arrested. And up until until recently, they were posted regularly on my Facebook page. So uh, we're going to find another way so that you can stay informed. But that's what she's talking about is just because it's Europe doesn't mean it isn't down the street from you. Sydney, you want to pick up from that? Yeah. Um, again, I just urge everyone listening to this message, this, this, this particular interview to please make it your responsibility, take accountability, accountability to stand for children in this very crucial moment in time. Right now, laws are being put into place that will silence millions of children across the globe. And it is our responsibility, it is everyone's responsibility to be a voice for the voiceless. Yeah, that was, I was just devastated when Proposition 20 didn't pass. I think so many people didn't understand what they were voting for. But, you know, I rue the day when our society says that that sexual exploitation of a child or child sex trafficking, which is in essence child sex rape, is not a violent crime. How can our society overlook that? Yeah, it's, you know, it's just a tragedy, but I do want to let you know, Opal, that I will be working endlessly over here to make sure that that happens in the state of California. I have a goal and I'm not going to stop until it's completed. I so appreciate it. we need, we need an army of people with that common goal to mm-hmm. make, we need to give that to the next generation. That should be our gift to children of California. Yes. I mean, this generation is the first generation to be connected to the entire world. That's what our movie is all about that's coming out uh, next spring. And we put them on there without describing to them how the thing works and how they can use it for good, but how to protect themselves. And it's it's crazy to me. Uh, what I'd like to do at this point, we're starting to come up to the end of the show. Sydney, tell us a little bit about Children's Riot, what people can do to get involved and uh, how to contact you. So you can definitely reach out to us through our Instagram account, but then also you can connect with us at hello at childrensriot.org. Um, we will have some events coming up in January for anti-trafficking awareness month. Uh, we are planning to host an event for our survivors that will help uplift them. And we're, we're going to need help with that. So we will need donations to make sure that that event is everything that it should be for these survivors. We're wanting to, again, uplift them in every way, connect them with people that can help focus in on their dreams and and help them get from point A to point B. 
So definitely come find us on Instagram. Come, come be a voice with us. Come share our post. I think our biggest goal is definitely awareness. The more people that find out about this, the better. That's the battle right there. So yeah, I'm amazed at the number of people that uh, I, I know that it's not the kind of thing you really want to look at. Uh, I like you, uh, you know, I kind of wandered into this, but I have only one time in my life seen child pornography when I was working uh, behind the scenes with the FBI. I was doing a drag and drop, if you know what that is, and mm-hmm. uh, wandered into a dark website. And you'll never forget it. I mean, I'm I'm tough. I live in this world. But you will never forget that when you see that. And I, I think that those of us that have seen it realize that it's important. You don't have to look at it. All you have to do is care about kids and understand this is real and we need to hold these people responsible. Right. Yeah. I, I mean, again, Opal, the things that I have seen through Instagram, through mm-hmm. Instagram, literally there was a baby rape page through Instagram that was open for the world to see. Mm-hmm. I've seen these pedophiles speak about children in such a horrific manner and it need, they need to be held accountable. Mm-hmm. And I, I agree. And uh, the technology companies need to really be held accountable. This is taking place on their platform. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's really amazing how they can do AI and focus right down and sell your kid the PS5, oh. you know, and know exactly how old your kid is and what they're watching. And yet they say that they don't have enough resources to find child exploitation. Because they don't want to pay moderators. That's the problem here. <laughs> they, oh, Oh, I'm very, <laughs> that gets me pretty fiery right there. I, yeah, I mean, we even as so verbal Opal that literally every time we would tag Mark Zuckerberg, our whole app would crash. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, you're talking to someone who no longer has a personal Facebook page. The last time I posted there was 90 days ago, just a little something cute to my granddaughter. And I'm like, really? And that, ta- that warrants me being taken down, but it's because my phone number is tied to the corporate uh, account that they just arbitrarily take you down and they make it very clear house rules our house will take you down if you want to this is not customer service you're not paying this is something we're doing because we want to and we don't want you to do it anymore and you go what kind of deal is this is this the you u.s know what, no, I will this. section 230 <laughs> was a gift to tech from the taxpayers from the people so if they are not if they are not abiding by what they promised in exchange for section 230 then it should be revoked and i feel very strongly about that people don't realize that section 230 was a gift from the people Yep, it so. sure was. Well, thank you for being our guest today. This is Sydney Takesta. Her organization is Children's Riot. Uh, you can contact her at hello at childrensriot.org. And um, we would ask you to consider supporting both our organizations. Both our organizations live and breathe at your generosity. And uh, without you, we can't do this. And uh, I wasn't I wasn't born with a silver spoon. We've just done this for 12 years. So, you know, and lately it's kind of like crawling up a mountain on your knees, I think, you know, but we need your help, both of us. This is Opal at millionkids.org and her organization is hello at childrensriot.org. So thank you, Sydney, for coming on. Thank you for doing what you do, especially on a very difficult subject that few people want to take on. I so much admire you. We'll right back at you, Opal. You folks have a great week. Put your arms around your children. Tell them you love them. And we'll see you next Saturday at 3 o'clock on AM 590. Societal Shift, A World Without Borders and a Home Without Walls. This is the most important book you will read this year, especially if you have children or grandchildren. We are living at the most important time in all of history. In 2020, the entire world will be connected by Internet, more than 6 billion people coming together. Technology will provide many great advantages for our kids, but a world without borders for our kids is also a world without borders for pimps, predators, pedophiles, cartels, and organized crime. It is a home without walls because 87% of the kids sleep with their phone. It is the greatest societal experiment of all time. Our kids are technology geniuses. 
and their parents are technophobic. Some are techno impotent. New apps come with no warnings on how a predator will use them against our kids. Advancing technologies like encrypted messaging, vaporware, artificial intelligence, cryptocurrency, and the dark net will challenge law enforcement, teachers, and parents to keep kids safe. Recent research states that 9,000 kids a day are being blackmailed with a naked photo and 58% will meet their predator. It is indeed a societal shift and one in which most parents are unprepared. If you are a parent or grandparent, teacher, counselor, or social worker, please take time to read Societal Shift. Only $18.99 plus $6 shipping. Order today at millionkids.org. That's millionkids, M-I-L-L-I-O-N-K-I-D-S dot org. It'll be the greatest gift you can give your family and yourself. Order Societal Shift today. Million Kids takes checks and credit cards. Opal Singleton, the author, will personally sign the book and send it to you. Again, go to millionkids.org and order Societal Shift today. Join Million Kids. Keep our kids safe from predators.